Hello everyone, uh, welcome back to the latest lecture session. Again a very quick recap of uh, what we have been up to right to refresh your memory. So we were looking at uh, you know the relevant calculations in the context of solidification and stabilization right. In that context we are looking at calculations of how to calculate the various fractions. So what is the key here uh, that we are looking at TCLP approach. Obviously, you can follow the trial and error approach, trial and error approach, right. You can follow the trial and error approach as in just you know try out different fractions, uh, right and then try to see to it that does it meet your relevant uh, criteria or not and so on and so forth or you will see that what is the pass mark or in what is the TCLP approach about, you are just trying to pass the relevant exam now. So, you look at the pass mark or the optimum pH and how do we uh, try to get that optimum pH now, uh, pH as in such that because in your TCLP test you are adding acid right you are going to decrease the pH. So, you will try to see that the pH is maintained even after addition of acid uh, that the pH is maintained at such a level that you know the relevant contaminants or heavy metals dissolve do not dissolve uh, to or beyond the, the relevant thresholds right. So, that is the approach and in that case obviously we looked at that. Uh, case as in we know that 20 ml per gram, 20 ml of extraction fluid is added per gram of waste, right. And I think we saw that uh, it is 0.1 milli equivalents of acid per ml of extraction fluid, right, milli equivalents, right. That is what we have for extraction fluid 2 anyway. And we multiply that, we end up with 2 milli equivalents per gram right per gram of waste. So, this is the amount of acid that uh, we are uh, adding out here right. So, obviously, you need to be able to neutralize this acid. So, your acid neutralizing capacity of the waste or the total mixture if I may say so should be equal to 2 milli equivalents per gram right. So, that is what it should be and you know that this is dependent upon the different fractions that you have and their acid neutralizing capacities right. So, this is what uh, we end up with. So, obviously, let us say you know if I take uh, cement let us say at a particular pH let us say uh, 11 it will have particular in acid neutralizing capacity and 10, 9, 8, 7 right A and C uh, 10, 9, 8 and 7 right. Different acid neutralizing capacity. So, obviously, which one will I choose? I will choose the one for that particular uh, or at that particular pH uh, when I know that the relevant heavy metals are not going to fall be below a certain uh, or above a certain threshold right. That is from your uh, KSP or the relevant charts that we are going to use again later on when we look at the relevant example I guess right. So, you are going to choose that particular acid neutralizing capacity interpolate or extrapolate if necessary and then plug that in here and uh, calculate that right. So, more or less again we are just trying to pass the uh, test let us say right we are just trying to pass the test. So, let us just look at one example that I have here. So, let us say we have acid neutralizing capacity of Portland cement to be 14 milli equivalents per gram of cement and for acid neutralizing capacity of waste it is minus 1 milli equivalent per gram. So, obviously, it cannot uh, neutralize an acid it itself adds as an acid let us say that is what we have here when we say it is minus 1 is uh, the acid neutralizing capacity right it is uh, negative acid neutralizing capacity and in this particular context to look at structural integrity and such the water and cement ratio is 0 0.6 and also that the waste itself contains 10 percent of the water that is available to hydrate the Portland cement right. So, let us just try to see how to go about solving for the relevant aspects right. So, what is the first aspect that you know the relevant acid neutralizing capacity of the mixture should be maintained at 2 milli equivalents per gram right. So, that should be equal to the fraction of what is this fraction mass of this particular element which is cement let us say by total mass right. So, fraction of the Portland cement into acid neutralizing capacity of this Portland cement plus fraction of that particular waste into acid neutralizing capacity of that particular waste plus fraction of water into acid neutralizing capacity of water 
in this example we are going to assume that this is equal to 0 ok. So, how will this transform into? So, fraction of Portland cement into fraction of uh, not fraction acid neutralizing capacity of Portland cement is 14 milli equivalent per gram plus fraction of waste into minus 1 that is equal to 2 milli equivalents per gram. So, all the units match out obviously because fractions dimensionless and acid neutralizing capacity the units are all in milli equivalent per gram now right. So, that is something that uh, we have out here right. But obviously, I have 3 variables what are they 1, 2 and 3 I have only 1 equation. What are the other equations obviously, I know that fraction of the Portland cement plus fraction of waste plus fraction of water obviously fractions right. So, the sum of the fractions should be equal to 1 that is something that I have, but I still need one other additional equation to be able to solve for that because I have 2 independent equations and 3 variables right. So, obviously, I need to look at this particular aspect. So, the fraction of water that I am going to add plus it seems 10 percent of the uh, waste has the relevant water right. I will have to write this as fraction of H2O plus 10 percent of fraction of waste contains water that is available to hydrate Portland cement that is why I have 10 percent here and by cement is fraction of Portland cement that is equal to 0 0.6. What is this here? This is nothing but water by water by cement ratio right. water by cement ratio that is fraction of H2O that you am adding additionally plus fraction of the water already present in the waste that seems, seems 10 percent by fraction of the Portland cement is equal to 0.6 right. So, now I have 3 equations and I will be able to solve them right uh, and I think let me look at the values that I have. So, we now have 3 equations right and we have 3 equations and 3 unknowns and we can solve them and let us look at the solution that I have. So, looks like the fraction of Portland cement is 0 0.197 or almost equal to 0 0.2 and fraction of the waste is 0 0.76 and fraction of water right 0 0.043 and total obviously should uh, equal be equal to 1 right the sum should be equal to 1 that is something that you see here. But typically you want to be able to let us say you know this is a typical example that you would face uh, you know uh, uh, this is actually I believe from one particular side. So, let us just try to understand how much cement I need to add per uh, you know so amount of waste let us say. So, what is the ratio though fraction of Portland cement per waste right. So, if I do that let us say uh, so I can see that. So, the fraction of this Portland cement to fraction of the waste is approximately going to be equal to I think. Uh, 0 0.2 or 0 0.25 maybe right. So, you get an idea about how much uh, cement or the binder it is that you need to add per uh, your uh, you know waste let us say right or per uh, gram of waste or such right. You need to add 0 0.25 grams of binder per 1 gram of your uh, waste now right this uh, this gives you an idea obviously. Obviously, you are going to have a homework that is uh, relatively more complex and we will again solve that right. Before we solve that again let us say I know I want to look at the other approach as in what have we looked at until now? We have looked at the TCLP approach right and trial and error as in briefly very briefly discuss this trial and error which we rarely use. TCLP approach is like you are just trying to pass the test right as in you are trying to meet that particular pH value and that is it. So, that you know whenever the TCLP test is conducted the results show that this particular solidified and stabilized block is not a hazardous waste anymore right. So, what is the better approach obviously, you are going to study for the test to obviously learn for the test or do well in the test let us say. So, in that uh, context let us say how do you understand this particular case. So, that is particularly based on site characterization let us say right, you know site characterization let us say. As in risk based approach. right. So, what is this uh, risk based approach about right. So, think of this your waste can end up in uh, any situation let us say where the conditions are such that they are worse than the TCLP uh, one what do you see than the conditions that the TCLP test would expose your waste to right. It can uh, be uh, in different kinds of or the waste can uh, end up in different kinds of settings now right. So, what is it that this uh, particular approach does? It is the risk based approach as in if you remember in our uh, 
classes, the initial classes anyway, we talked about risk as in uh, non-carcinogenic risk or hazard index, let us say, right. And we also talked about lifetime cancer risk and that hazard index should be less than 1 and lifetime cancer risk, the thresholds are 10 power minus uh, 6 and so on and so forth, right. It should be less than 10 power minus 6. Hazard index is for uh, non-carcinogenic compounds, lifetime cancer risk obviously for cancer, you know, carcinogens obviously, right. So, let us say uh, what are we going to do? Let us say we know where this particular solidified and stabilized uh, mass is going to end up in. And then I am going to look at let us say the relevant transport and the relevant pathways. Typically what is the pathway? That the leachate enters the groundwater and the groundwater then you know is uh, what do we say consumed by or the relevant populations are exposed to this particular groundwater and thus they are being exposed to the contaminant, right. So then I can calculate the relevant uh, what do we say exposure concentrations, I know the pathways, I can come up with the risks, right. So it is a risk based approach. So I will calculate the risks, right say, and see is the risk less than the thresholds as is in is the less than 1 and less than 10 power minus 6 for the lifetime cancer risk and so on. And if it is less, okay, that is fine. If not, then I need to take remedial actions, right. So here we are actually having the, uh, what do we say, uh, disposal conditions and actual site conditions in our mind and that is our objective, right. We are not just trying to beat the test, but we are trying to see to it that the final disposal uh, conditions are uh, such that they do not uh, create any human health issues or such, right. So that is obviously the risk based approach, right. Let us just look at one aspect here. So let us say I have my solidifies and stabilized mass blocks here and let us say this is disposed at some particular site. And let us say I have my ground water obviously flowing out here let us say. So this is subsurface and let us say you know now water permeates through and is in contact with it let us say. So the flow rate of this particular leachate I will call this leachate is QL. So this leachate is now in contact with let us say your this particular waste and obviously either to, through diffusion or advection or such. I am going to have some of these contaminants leaching into this waste. So, I will call the, I will refer to the concentration of those contaminants in the leachate as QL, I mean pardon me CL and the rate of flow of this particular leachate as QL, right. This is something we can estimate. And here let us say I know the concentration, not concentration, the flow rate of the groundwater and concentration of the contaminants if any in the groundwater typically the, we can assume them to be 0. So, at this particular point let us say or uh, if not point in space let us say they are going to mix as in the leachate and the groundwater are going to mix right and then I am going to end up with Q a new Q right which is the mixture and concentration of the mixture of leachate and groundwater right. So, obviously I will be concerned about this particular value because this is the value that the relevant uh, population is going to be exposed to. Let us look at how we get there. So, obviously again as you see it is mass balance here what is coming in, coming in and going out, right. So, it is nothing but Q of the ground water into concentration of the ground water as in mass of the contaminant in the ground water the initially plus Q of the leachate into concentration of the relevant contaminant in the leachate. What is this? This is the mass of the contaminant in the leachate will be equal to the total mass after mixing. What is the total mass after mixing? It is nothing but Q groundwater plus Q leachate into the concentration of the mixture, right. So, the concentration of mixture and so this concentration of mixture is thus nothing but Q groundwater into concentration of groundwater. Typically we can say this is 0, right, plus QL CL by Q ground water plus Q of the leachate, right. So, this is the concentration of the relevant uh, what is it now uh, contaminant after mixing between the ground water and the leachate. So, what are we observing here? We are observing that the leachate is contaminating the ground water and this particular uh, what we say contaminated ground water will then be you know taken in by different uh, what we say uh, uh, people out there in that locality and then I can calculate the relevant risk based on exposure concentration, age, body weight, let us say 
exposure frequency, exposure duration, exposure time and so on and we did look at these calculations in great detail in the earlier class, right. So, we are obviously not going to go there again, but let us look at the scenarios here now. There are two scenarios as in equilibrium could have already been reached or there is enough time let us say, uh, let us say that the equilibrium can be reached between both the leachate and the uh, what do we say now the contaminant in the within the solidified matrix now right or within the pore space in the matrix right or it can also be under kinetic control when the equilibrium has not been reached. So, there are two cases one case when the equilibrium has been reached so that I will call to be equilibrium control right. So, equilibrium control how will that uh, more or less be affected here? let us say C L itself is the equilibrium concentration. So, I can plug this in here and then get this concentration as C mixture is equal to Q L C L or let us say you know let me simplify this further I am trying to get this Q L C L is equal to Q L into the C equilibrium obviously right the equilibrium concentration itself. So, that is something straightforward, but what is the other way though? if there is not enough time for the system to reach equilibrium as an equilibrium of what now? Equilibrium of the contaminant between this leachate and the uh, what we say contaminant in the uh, what do we say pore space within the uh, solid now right. So, if there is not enough time for equilibrium to be reached it is going to be under kinetic control right, kinetic control right. So, how do I get this? Typically, you know, we might be under kinetic control, right? So, how do I get this though, right? For example, we know that we have Mt by M0 is equal to I think what now 4 d observed time by pi L square to the power of 0 0.5 or square root. I, rem I believe we have this, right? Let us just check that here, right? That we have that. So, Mt is equal to M0 into 4 d observed t pi L square, right? So, in kinetic control right what is it that I am going to have Q into C let us say or Q L into C L. The C L will be dependent upon this particular mass right that time t. So, that is going to be equal to Q L into d m t let us say with respect to d t right because kinetic control equilibrium has not yet been reached and what is that going to be equal to Q L into m naught and all the other uh, what we say aspects are constants right 4 d observed pi L square, but t to the power of 0 0.5 right derivative of that will be again I will end up with t to the power 1 by 2 and 1 by t square right ok uh, or nothing but 1 by 2 t to the power of minus 0 0.5 right. So, that is going to be equal to pi L square t right and 4 and 1 by 2 are going to cancel out if I bring them out. So, that is going to be equal to d observed right, right. So, um, this is going to be to the power of 0 0.5 let us just check this. So, it is supposed to be equal to right 1 by 2 t to the power of minus 0 0.5 is nothing but 1 by root t right. So, that is what I have here. So, that is fine out here and so, Q L C L is equal to Q L into m naught d observed by pi L square t to the power of uh, 0 0.5. But keep in mind that you know uh, this particular value or this uh, C L here calculated by this particular set of variables cannot be greater than the C equilibrium value right. Because obviously, the maximum can be only the C equilibrium and how do we get the C equilibrium? We have the relevant uh, equilibrium constants and so on and so forth right. Uh, so, again that is the relevant aspect that we need to consider here right. So, typically again there is going to be a phase when it is going to be between what do we say. Uh, equilibrium control and kinetic control right. So, that is something also you will also uh, need to be concerned about when it is equilibrium control and when it is kinetic control let us say right. So, that is something to uh, keep in mind. So, if there is enough time or if let us say the flow is uh, relatively slow such that equilibrium can be reached typically we will have equilibrium control, but if that is not enough time what is going to happen you are going to have kinetic control right uh, because there is not enough time for the system to reach equilibrium. So, the concentration in the leachate will be relatively less than the concentration that would be in the leachate if the uh, system can reach equilibrium right. So, that is something that we need to keep in mind. So, depending on these two approaches what are the TCLP approach and the risk based approach we can uh, look at how much you know uh, concentrations of the waste or the fractions of waste 
cement and so on and so forth need to be added and we can get that done. So, I guess I am uh, you know slightly out of time to be able to explain the whole uh, example here. So, we will do that in the next session. So, again we are going to look at a complex uh, relatively co more complex example and look at the TCLP approach right and maybe you can then use that to solve the relevant uh, homework uh, questions I guess right and I guess with that uh, that is it from me for today and thank you.